Hello, Webflow gang. So here we are, the arrival of the Mutts Nuts. Webflow and GSAP is finally here and available to everyone. And I am beyond excited to show you what is possible. I was lucky enough to be in the beta and it's been a great experience. And first of all, thank you for Webflow and GSAP for making this happen. It's beyond belief what you can do. Um, the whole interface change of the timeline is amazing and I'm so excited to walk you through what I've been doing and how things come to life through this new update. Um, this has been a great, great thing that I think a lot of us have wanted for so, so long and to have this power at our fingertips is unbelievable. Just in a few clicks, you can create absolutely amazing and stunning animations that are never before possible without custom code. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run through this example. I'm also gonna highlight some of the key things that I really love. I'm gonna show you how I put some of this together and give you a bit of a walkthrough. Super excited, I hope you are too, and let's dive straight into it. So here we are jumping into the example that I'm gonna be walking you through. And let me tell you, it's absolutely amazing what can be done. Maybe it's even staggering, no pun intended, of what we can actually do now inside of Webflow with GSAP. So let's just jump in and have a little look of what's going on here. We have the staggering effect of the elements on the images, on the text, the way that the text moves across, all done in just a few clicks. And I'll walk you through how easy it is. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but I promise you, once you get to grips with it, it's gonna feel like a breeze. As we start to scroll, we've got more of these beautiful scrolling effects. We scroll across, we have that staggering effect. Oh, it's so juicy. Just like an orange, maybe. So over to the side here, we have these great hover effects. Again, using that stagger effect in such a really nice way. Absolutely love it. And let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the breakdown of how we put this together. I will put this out for clone so you can have a little play around. So jumping into Webflow, starting off with, if you're in the interactions panel, there is a drop down at the bottom. Make sure you whack that GSAP and you will see a change. Over to the left hand side is that first change and this feature is the interactions panel. This is where you will see all of your interactions and there's a bonus right now where we have the action preset. Now you can save your animations and reuse them again across other projects. This is a great feature. This is gonna be great for bigger builds and it's really gonna make sure that you perform your sites in the best possible way. Now jumping into the page load and I'm gonna give a little bit of a walkthrough. Now as you can see here, I've already got a number of actions. What we would need to do if we wanna create a new action is we click the plus icon, there is some presets in here. It's quite a few, there's some really nice things going on already. Um, custom is actually to create a new custom one. And then we have the target. Inside of the target settings, we can now control by lots of different items. And again, the power and the possibilities here are going to be crazy. Set as trigger, element ID, class, attribute, custom select selector. Moving in, we have the class. Now we have the pre-populated um, class selector so we can select the classes that we have or we can start to type them in and they will appear which is really really handy and then we have scope and this again is where there's going to be lots of possibilities children sibling parent next sibling previous sibling descendants ancestors first descendant first ancestor so much control so much power in here the one that we're going to be focusing on is descendants um, and this is a great, great property to start off with. And just with that property, we have created most of these interactions here. We have the durations, we have the start time, and we have the easing options, we have the from and to, and obviously we can type in the properties that we want. We have some pre-selected items, which are pretty standard, um, and obviously we can remove the ones that we don't want, but of course, if we want a little bit more power and a little bit more flexibility, there is a whole arsenal in here of loads of other great properties that we can we can use, especially the class. Now this is gonna be a very powerful feature where we can actually target class elements and we can toggle, we can add, we can remove, we can toggle. Just think about all of the things that you could do with that. This is something that we will explore and this is something that I need to dig deeper into. 
So let's jump out of this. Let's close this. And we're going to go to the start of the show. The timeline. Whoa. We have all been waiting for this timeline. And let me tell you, this thing is amazing. Now we can see our, our animations in full. We can see the timeline in a great visual way. And the way that you can interact with it and use it is amazing. For example, if we want to move this animation, we just move it. If we want to change the speed of it, we just drag it. So that's so easy and so flexible. Remember last time when we had to like move each of the individual points by changing the, the kind of uh, decimal points for the kind of delays on each of these. Now we can multi-select and we can drag these along as one whole unit. That is going to make our life so much easier, so much quicker. We can now also scrub through the animation timeline, which again is something really, really great. This is where we can get into them super, super tiny little details and really see the animation come to life, which is just amazing. I love this. So visual, so nice. Control, power is all in your hands now. And making animations, personally, is going to be an absolute joy and even better. So starting off with, let's do the image intro. Now we're going to run through this. We have the image intro, which has a stagger, and I'm going to walk you through how that happened. So inside of here, we have a class and we have the hero parent. So I'm going to go over to here and I'm just going to break this down a little bit. So inside of the hero parent, we have the image parent wraps. And basically what we're saying here is inside of the hero parent with the descendants and adding the asterisk asterisk is basically saying anything inside of that hero parent please animate um, and that's such an easy thing to do you just put that there and then anything inside of that element will animate and this is where the stagger effect comes in and completely takes over we have a to and from a from and to sorry from zero to one then we have the stagger we just apply the stagger, total time, one second. And as you can see here, we have a preview of that stagger coming in. And with this setup of targeting anything inside of that hero parent, we can now stagger all of the elements that sit inside of this. And it is literally that easy. It is crazy how easy it is. So that's how we did the stagger elements that are coming into the page, including the images. Then if we go to the text in, again, on this one, slightly different because we just want to target the text elements. We don't need to do the descenders. Um, we have the class, all matching elements, and then we've got the through, uh, from and the to, zero to 100%, 200 pixels down to zero pixels. Then we have the stagger at 0 0.4, and then we have these controls. And again, this is where it's going to add a lot more flexibility. I see this perfect for uh, text and stagger effects we can obviously do it from the start that will change how that effect works see how it comes from the start we've got from the center which uh, which is what i had which i absolutely love so the t comes up first and then the o and the l the reason why i did it from the center is because we have five letters and it creates an equal separation uh, left and right with the t so that worked really well to have it come from the center we have it from the end the edges and even random and random, as you can see, scatters the way that these come in. And again, there's just going to be so many possibilities with that. And I absolutely love that. Of course, you can control the easing with that stagger. And then the other star of the show is the split text. And it's as simple as turning it on and then selecting letter. We can add a mask. So if we do want to hide it in a diff so it reveals itself. I've already got this text element inside of a text parent that has text um, text hidden. Um, if we do want to maybe do an animation where the letters come from the side, then we can wrap each of the letters in a span effectively, which has overflow hidden, and then we can animate them in from the left or the right, which will again create a really, really cool animation. One thing to note that when we do wrap them in the spans, um, some text is going to clip clip slightly weirdly so you may need to investigate and add a little bit of additional CSS um, so maybe sticking to a sans serif font is going to be the best option if you do want to wrap each of these letters in and as you can see here we can just play through that animation to show the staggering of that then we have the image move now I had to do something a little bit 
smarter here is because I wanted to keep that front image in the center, but I wanted to move the other three to the side. So what I actually did, if we go in and just have a little look here in the style panel, image parent wrap items, one, two, and three, and then the front one is image parent wrap. And then what we can do is we can then actually just target these three and then we can move them to the side. Uh, again, that's pretty straightforward to do. So if we jump back in there and we have a little look, I'm just going to scale this down, go to the image move. As you can see, class, image parent items, all matching elements. And then we've done a from and a to 0% to 50%, which then moves them images over to the side again adding that stagger effect and using the ease and we just created a really beautiful effect straight away finishing up with we have the orange text again super simple class uh, adding the tag all matching elements 0% to 100% stagger time and then we have that final little animation there which is beautiful this is where I think that stagger effect if we if we do the clipping here yeah exactly so as you can see with this uh, serif font here which is more scripty you can see that it's actually cutting uh, each of the letters off so you will need to be mindful of that um, and as a whole as we play it through amazing absolutely love it great one other great thing about the timeline is that if we want to do a new animation, we just double click onto this and we can start to move it around and we can start to select what we want. And we can add and create our animations very, very quickly. This is what I love about it. We can even delete it from the timeline. Everything's so easy now, so easy to put together, to move, to change, to tweak without having to manually do everything bit by bit. Moving into the page scroll. So again, there's a lot of similar things going on here. Just gonna drag this down a little bit. We have the scroll text. We've got a few elements on here. So the scroll text is doing a scale and then a stagger and a move. So there's a few things going on here. On the scroll text one, as you can see, we've got title, intro. We've got a move from zero viewpoint height to minus 45 viewpoint height. We have the stagger. We've got it from the center again. And then we've got the split text on as well. So as we scroll, that does the stagger and, and the move. Then we have the scale. So we have a little bit of a scale on that title intro to make sure it fits into this card because I wanted to make it almost like a poster or a postcard, which I absolutely love. Again, super simple to do that. I just did uh, same again, as you can see. Title intro, scale from one to 0 0.7. And then we have the move on the script, which is just the move, class, script, all matching elements. And then we're moving it down 17 viewpoint height. As you can see, it just moves. And then that image zoom, which is again, class, image parent, all matching elements. And what we've done is we've done the width and the height properties here. We've used viewpoint height and viewpoint width so that this scales and keeps its proportion responsively. Um, but it works so, so well. I know in this preview right now, you can't, it doesn't look like it fits. So maybe drop the timeline down, have a little look, and make sure it works all well. Moving along, we have the scroll images side. This is a long stagger effect. Um, and what we've just done here is we've gone back to the image parent. So we animated these and then I've then targeted the image parent to then move them across. So we went 50 uh, over the other side and then we're gonna bring them 50 the other side. Now the thing is, is with the image parent is that we're also bringing the images back. So the ones that were over this left side. So that's why I targeted this element here um, and as you can see as we scrub through this the images are in the middle but when we go to the example as you see and that's why I animated the top element and then on animated the second element so that we can bring these images across they all scale and then they all move and it creates this really beautiful effect here love it so finally, moving on to the hover animation. 
Now, one thing to note about uh, the hover animation, which is a little bit more of a different approach when it comes to creating hover animations, is that sometimes you need to preset the animation with CSS. Now, if you think about GSEP, uh, a lot of the starting animations are actually done with CSS. So if I go into my border line here, and I move down here, I've already set the transform to move out. And then when we apply the animation, it will bring it back in and back out. Now they're a little bit more different in terms of the way that we do it. Same kind of principle, and I'll run you through how that works. So as you can see, the image hover, and we also have this trigger. So this is slightly different. Into the timeline, we have the image scale, which of course is the image inside of this side nav. So I'll just bring this open, as you can see here. And what we've got is same as trigger. So basically, we're on this as the trigger, and we're doing same as trigger, descendants, and we're doing image cover nav. So what we're saying is, inside of side nav item, I want to target image parent nav. And that way, we can scale that image. The line draw, as I just showed you, we've moved it out 100%, and then we're going to do 2 to 0%. I don't even know if we need, I'm just going to see if we actually need, yeah, we don't even need the from, because the from is already set. So again, I'm still learning, I'm still uh, seeing how this is going. I'm going to set it back to how it was, um, but sometimes we don't necessarily need the from because the from is saying this is where it was from and where we're going to. So that's something to think about. And then we have the text uh, stagger effect on the animation, which is just rolling through. Super simple here, 100% to 50%. Again, I probably don't need to do the 100%. I probably just need to do the 50%. And let's have a little look. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes you don't even need to set the from. We've got the stagger on there, 0 0.4, and then we also have the split text as well for the letter. And how that comes together is amazing, super nice. Back to the trigger settings. So we go into the first one, and this is uh, disconnected again because of the update. Let's just put this back in side nav item, um, we've got the mouse enter, each mouse enter, play from beginning. So, and then we go into the second one, so we would need to create this. So it would just, when you create that first animation, it will just have this. We'll do the, clip, uh, the hover, sorry. Uh, and then we're gonna do side, nav item and then we're going to do mouse leave and each mouse leave and then again we have all of these different properties in here and we're just going to say reverse we can increase and decrease the speed and um, actually it works up so if i do two it's two times the speed out um which is a little bit confusing but it, it kind of makes sense um, i will leave that because that's how it is so that's what we do we need to create the Hover setting, which is the hover enter, which will already be created once you do this first one. And then you'll need to come back out and you'll need to do the reverse. And again, remember that we had to create that reverse animation. You imagine if we create super big complex timeline animations and now you literally just go in and click reverse and it's done. And that is saving so much time. It's unbelievable what is possible. And I hope this little walkthrough it's giving you a little taste of what is possible. I'm going to be back again soon and I'm going to share more with you. And that's it. I hope you like it. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.